<laughs> oh, you just nodded all over my shirt. Fine people of the internet, Robert T. Garden today kicking off a series that a few of you have been asking about that's roughly centered around how to edit video for beginners. Uh, this video in particular, we're going to be looking at file management. <laughs> Boring, I know, but this is really the thing that actually set me apart from being a beginning videographer and editor to a professional videographer and editor. It's when I started taking my media management a little bit more seriously in terms of how my files are set up, what my actual folders look like, uh, really it kind of just set the difference between, uh, you know, beginning and, and professional editing. So uh, this will be kind of linked as a playlisted series on the channel and we'll go over a bunch of different techniques and tips and tutorials that I use to kind of make my life easier from an editing standpoint, the theories that I use from an editing standpoint, um, how I approach my craft, et cetera, et cetera. But this is where I wanted to start off with. You can watch them in however order you want to. Enough rambling, I'm gonna jump in to the computer. My theory and my thoughts about this uh, are really going to be illustrated through Premiere using a Windows machine. But with that being said, you can do this in any platform operating system that you'd like with any editing program that you'd like. I've used this for Final Cut. I started this kind of process for myself on my Mac. So don't let this deter you. The theory is still the same. Um, and a lot of the things are very applicable nonetheless. So with that being said, Let's hop on into the computer. Okay, so I'm in my uh, computer here and taking a look. And the first thing I typically do is once I have my little SD card here, I'm gonna take this guy, I'm gonna plop it in the computer and uh, we're gonna start to look at what type of media pops up. And usually there it is, folder comes up right here. Um, not a ton, just got some B-roll here from some stuff I was shooting from a client. Uh, and so what I need to do is make sure that I can put this in an appropriate place. So I'm gonna start a new folder, uh, go down to one of my hard drives, uh, put this in, let's see, Fast Intentions is where this is gonna go. We'll name it today's date, or the actually we'll name it the date of the footage itself. So this was shot on the 27th, and I'm gonna say Fast Intentions Test video okay cool so we've got that here oops i need to make a space right there cool now from this point if you guys uh haven't you should check out wherever the thing pops up you should check out the video i've done on the automatic folder creation um, I wrote this little cool extension thing that I found online, kind of tweaked it to my liking, um, renamed it. And so now all I have to do is just double click on this little create projects folder executable file. Um, it automatically creates all of the file folders that I use on a regular basis. That I'll go over in two seconds. Um, and then I just delete that thing out of that little folder itself, out of the main directory. So I'm in this test video footage directory. As you can see, the first step in how I manage my files that create these six folders. I create one for audio, for footage, project files, motion graphics, renders, and stills. Um, audio is one of two things. It's going to be either music that I use in that particular creation, or it's going to be the voiceover dialogue that I'm capturing from a third party source. So unless it's on camera, a lot of times if I'm doing interviews or I'm in the field, I'll have a smaller recorder like a Zoom H1N, or I'll use a Zoom F4 field recorder do all of my dialogue to that particular recorder and then put that dialogue in here. If I do that, what I'll typically do is I'll create a folder for voiceover uh, and then I'll create another folder for music, right? So it just really depends on how I have that project set up. Footage, um, we'll get to that in just one second. Uh, that's probably one of the most important ones that we have, but there's a way in which I do this. Uh, project files for me, where I'm working is, like I said, is Adobe Premiere. So my Adobe Premiere project files get saved there. The next one I have is for motion graphics. So if I'm doing anything in Adobe, uh, what's the damn program called? After Effects. 
I legitimately had a brain fart there. That wasn't me trying to be funny. Um, so anything I do in After Effects, that stuff goes in there. So my logos go in there, any of my ping files. Um, if I have any type of motion graphic stuff that, that the client sends over to me um, in terms of imagery that they want me to use, all of that stuff gets stored in the motion graphics folder. My renders seem self-explanatory, but any exports that I do go in that renders folder. I have been known to create subfolders inside the render queue as well, a render queue, render folder um, for stuff like, you know, if I know I'm going to have stuff just for web or just for social, if I have prelims that I need approval for, I'll put a prelim folder and then I'll put a subfolder for final exports. And once I get all the notes from the client, I'll put that stuff in there too. Um, and last are stills. I don't really shoot a ton of stills. Um, I prefer to play in the video space. Um, but stills nonetheless come along with a lot of the projects that I do. So I have a folder just for stills. So that's why I have those six folders. Let's take a look at the footage because that's what I'm actually going to be loading right now. So the next thing I'm going to do is I pop in this footage and what I, what I do, what, what I do, what I'll do with footage. And this is probably one of the most important things I do in terms of my file organization is I'm creating a separate subfolder for each camera that I shoot something on. Um, most of the time it's just my A7S III that I'm shooting with uh, and that's my main workhorse and most of the, the stuff just comes from that camera. Um, but a lot of times, especially if I'm doing interviews, I'm gonna have a secondary camera. Um, so either another Sony probably because I like the color science to match. Um, or if I'm also doing some establishment shots, we have some trick drone shots, I'll have my Mavic folder. If I do anything in a GoPro, I'll have a separate GoPro folder. If I'm doing any type of vlogging setup and I need to just quickly get something on my phone, I'll have a phone just, or a folder just for my iPhone footage. So for this one right now, what I know I'm going to have is a folder for my Sony A7 III. I don't like that space there, I like to keep it there. So my A7 Mark III, I'm gonna create that folder. And then I'm gonna take the footage that I have from this B-roll and I'm going to drag it inside of my Sony A7 III footage. So now as this stuff is pulling over, it's a pretty fast card going to a reasonably fast hard drive. So hopefully this doesn't take too long of a period of time because I don't really wanna have to waste time talking. I wonder if there's any copyright violation that I would get in trouble for for using that. You guys should see what my dog looks like right now. His favorite thing in the world to do um, is to lay on his back uh, with his legs and stomach up in the air. I post this on my Instagram all the time. <laughs> But, but look, this is what he looks like. Look at him. He just lays like that all the time. Kind of ridiculous, right? He didn't always used to lay like this. He would lay like a normal dog, but now, you know, he's just on his back all the time. I don't know if it's like a cooling thing or... All right, for the purpose of this video, I'm just gonna cut that transfer short because we're gonna be able to see exactly what I want to do here. I didn't copy all 27 files. I just copied the nine of them. So let's take a look now and see exactly what I do with them. So now that I have these files inside uh, the directory that I want them into in the folder that is labeled for that specific camera, the other thing I'm going to do, and this is huge, I'm gonna rename each individual file. Now it seems like I'm gonna tell you to do like a bunch of work. It's not that difficult. And you can do this very easily on a Mac and a PC. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna highlight all of them. You can do control all, or I like to just kind of shift uh, click my way through this and then I'm gonna right click same type of thing as is possible for you on a Mac as well uh, I'm gonna go down to rename and it's gonna prompt me just for the very first file but this same naming convention is gonna work for every file that I put in here so what I do is I always put the date I put year first then the month then the day, that way my files are always numbered in sequential order, literally chronological order in terms of how they happen. Then I put a space and I'm gonna say fast intentions test video. So my first appendage is actually the same as the folder name. Then I'm gonna say this is A73 footage. 
And then I'm gonna put an underscore because after that is gonna parenthetically number each one of these files that I have here, okay? Before I hit enter, the way you would do this on a Mac is you actually go to the renaming convention and what you want to use is the format function. Um, I'll figure out a way of putting in a little insert here as well. You wanna use the format function and the first part of what I just put, you put on the left hand side of that dialog box. And then afterwards you can actually start which number, you can indicate which number you want the thing to start at. Um, so let's say, you know, you already uploaded 50 files and something happened and you want to go from 51 to 100. You can start that naming convention at 51, which is really handy to do. You don't have to go back and kind of uh, undo what you've done if there's a mistake or if you're loading multiple files throughout different time periods. Um, so now that I've kind of explained that, I'm going to go back to our Windows machine here. Once I click enter, it's going to kind of sequentially, like I said, number these things with the parenthetical appendage at the end, right? And so you can see it happens super quick. I've got one through 11 files that are there. You know, I had more, but obviously I cut it short. Um, and so now what this allows me to do is as it pops into Premiere or Final Cut or whatever the, the format that you're using, this now has the exact camera and number of clip that I'm going to use. The reason this is really important is that for Sony's and I know for Canon's as well, um, the sequence that happens once you format that card, unless you keep it kind of sequentially going, keep the filing number system sequentially going, um, is going to start over every time. So C0001 is going to happen literally every time you turn your camera on and format a card. So imagine if you, for some reason, switch hard drives or you have to switch a machine and you go back in, you have to relink media. And the only thing you're looking for is C0001 and you have hundreds of clips from multiple cameras that have that naming convention, you will not be able to tell which one is which, and it's going to say, it's going to cost you a ton of time. If you're ever in a situation where there's a producer or someone else within that project that's looking over your shoulder as you're trying to relink media and that's your naming convention, you're going to sweat through your shirt. It's going to be incredibly uncomfortable and you're going to look like a total noob asshole. So this is why I do this. So now when I know what files I'm looking for, I'm actually looking for the actual project and the camera and the number file that I'm looking for. And there's no confusion in terms of how I set that project up. Each one of them are unique to the actual project itself. Cool? Cool. Next phase, we're going to launch Premiere. I'm going to show you something that's cool about how we set these things up as well. Okay, so I'm going to launch Premiere. So Premiere is up and now I want to launch a new project. Uh, I'm going to now save this in the same directory that we created this test footage, put it in the projects file bin. And so now we'll name the project file the same name as the folder that it's coming from. So 2020. 0227 fast intentions test video. My typing right there was top notch. And so now I'm going to hit OK. And so as we go back to our system, what do I have? I have the project file itself. Now the next phase of how I manage my files um, and for good measure, I'm going to go in and actually add a music track, uh, just something that I pre downloaded. Um, let's see, broken a minute. Sure, that works. I'm gonna put broken a minute in my audio folder. Okay, I'll show you exactly why I did that uh, in a second. So now that I have my bins set up the way that they are and my folder system set up the way that they are, something that's really useful is that I can go back in and just drag these first two folders into Premiere itself and import my footage that way. I know a lot of people know that you can just drag files into Premiere or into Final Cut, but the reason that it's cool to do it from a folder perspective is that once I drag that stuff into the project itself, it sets it up already in those bins. And what's great is if I have multiple cameras, remember I said my Sony a7 III, my Mavic, my GoPro, if I have any iPhone footage, that folder is already set up as well. OK, so now let's take a look. These things have been imported already. I'm going to actually change the view to list view and I'm going to hit these drop downs and you see the folder system that we created is already there. The naming convention that we put together is already there as well. It tells me my frame rate. 
media start, all the different pertinent information that I need for this particular folder. Let's take a look at our audio. The same thing, remember I just drugged that file in there as well. Now I'm ready to go. My stuff is already set up, okay? Now, if for some reason I needed to relink any media uh, that went offline, I got that dialog box that comes up that says we can't find this stuff with like the little emoji. I'd be hunting down that folder and those files themselves. It's not gonna be some crazy, you know, standardized readout from your camera. It's gonna be exactly how we want them to look. Um, so they're easy to find and easy to relocate, okay? But this is a way that I use that I've refined over time that's allowed me to basically create the easiest workflow possible um, to save me time, to save me money, uh, to save me headaches, and pulling out what little hair I have left. Okay, uh, this is going to end this tip tutorial, how to edit the first version of this. If you dug it, please give me uh, some type of feedback, comment, like, share, subscribe, something or other. Um, until next time, Dexter and I will see you in the next video. Thanks so much for watching Tea Garden out.